So the wine is the 2008 Moritz Reserve Blaufränkisch. Uh, the region for this wine is Burgenland, which is over in the east of Austria, on the border of Hungary. Specifically, actually, this is Mittelburgenland. Mittelburgenland. That's um, it's actually quite a long um, area that stretches quite far north to south um, and is known for its red uh, wines. Uh, you've got a little bit around sort of uh, the top of Austria that's known a lot more for its whites like Grunfeld, Inner and Riesling, but down here in Burgenland you're talking red wines. This is a, kind of a holy trinity of grapes down there, which are this one, Blaufränkisch, one called St. Laurent, and another one called Zweigelt, which is actually a cross between the two. Zweigelt, in fact, as it turns out, is the most planted red grape in, in Austria. This one, Blaufränkisch, the second most planted. Um, and for many, probably the most internationally recognisable, I guess. Typically, you get wines that have a fair amount of colour to them, uh, some really good fresh acidity to them, and typically kind of red-fruited kind of cherries, but a lot of earth and spice. So they kind of do things that people can recognise quite readily, even though it looks like a really foreign uh, name, uh, La Frankish. And the producer, Moritz, is actually one of the, if not the, uh, most uh, renowned um, maker of modern Blaufränkisch. The Austrians did what a lot of other people did with red wine back in the day. They tried to just throw a load of oak at them and make them look like serious wines. Uh, Moritz is someone who completely goes the other way, or rather the producer Moritz, goes the other way by trying to really put the grape and the region at the, at the forefront. Um, there's actually some nice comments. He's a really forthright guy, the guy behind the Moritz project. His name is Roland Bellich. Uh, as you can probably tell from the label, there's no messing around here. It's bold and it's really straight down the line. Um, and he talks about how he thinks that the world is sick of uniform wines made, for a, made to a formula, made to win you know, lots of points with concentrated, smooth wines that kind of don't look like they come from anywhere but just look serious or expensive. Um, and he says that fast money makes fast wines, and basically fast wines are only good for fast food. Uh, so this is something where he went particularly to Burgundy to look at the great wines from Pinot Noir, to the Rhone to look at the great wines from Syrah, Shiraz, um, and also to Piedmont, looking at Nebbiolo um, from Barolo especially. Um, Areas that grow different varieties, but the one thing that they really have in common is that there's a real soulfulness and a real purity to the best wines down there, and a real depth as well. They're, they're all really pretty, beguiling, aromatic wines quite often, but they have a real depth of soul to them. And he was determined to bring that whole idea to Blaufränkisch, saying that wines really should be unique because they are the meeting of a place, of a soil, of a climate, and of a variety, and of course, Blaufränkisch being his his passion, his whole his whole movement, his whole Moritz idea is all about showcasing the grape. This wine is a reserve, which of course has no real meaning in in the real world, uh, except to say that it's separate from the general regional bottling, um, which is the kind of wine that you probably try first quite often. This one just a little bit more serious in terms of how good the fruit is, how special the fruit is that's selected to go in here comes from two villages down in Mittelburgenland, called, one called Lutzmannsburg and one called Neckenmarkt. I think the majority of this blend being from Neckenmarkt, I believe. Um, they're kind of soils down there, you're talking limestone soils, a bit of clay, a bit of loam, and you've got a kind of, the most important thing about the climate here is you've got the big Pannonian plain, big um, plain that crosses over into, into Hungary that blows really nice warm air up, um, kind of warm enough to, to really ripen these quite late ripening Blaufränkisch grapes, but also with quite steep hillsides. So these um, hillsides just make it cool in the evening and just give you a nice long growing season to really get depth of flavour and character into the fruit. Um, and as I said, the, the reserve bottling comes from the very best areas, some of the older vines, so you're talking 45 plus years old. A lot of the vines down in Neckenmarkt actually in Lutzmensburg are more like a hundred year old planting. So the big fat trunks, really deep rooting vines going through that limestone soil very deep and again giving you another dimension to the wines. Um, and 
again, the one thing I would guess you'd say is that it sounds really exotic and really foreign, kind of perhaps a bit weird, La Frankish from Austria, red wine from Austria. But the one thing you notice, I think, when you drink these wines is that you recognize quite a lot about them because the fruit is really immediate, really fresh, um, and the earthy, spicy characters that you kind of know probably from Pinot Noir wines that you may have drunk, Nebbiolo wines, or even those sort of more earthy Shiraz wines, um, kind of come together uh, in something that you kind of recognize as being slightly familiar, but the immediacy is, is fantastic. And talking about the kind of the way they're made, this is there's no new oak here. These are all big old oak um, barrels. The reserve fully aged for about two years in there just to really soften it up and mellow it out. Um, wild fermented, there's no fining, no filtration. So these are all kind of vegan friendly, but they're just pure, easy drinking, but with tremendous longevity and great depth to them. Bloody good wine.